Do you want to be my friend? Let me kiss you. Ah! <laughs> nice, awesome. And that's not going to be the only meal the snake eats. I'm going to have to feed him probably two or three more little fuzzies so he gets a good meal on him. What a cool snake. Look at that nose. Come on. Ooh. Oh, what a strike. This is little Lacey. She's coming out. Come on, so come on. Oh, look at that. She's such a little athletic lizard. Don't be so kind. Look, I'm gonna give you a kiss. Kiss it, Death, like that. Yes? Don't be so angry at me. Oh my goodness. I'm gonna give you some food. Don't worry about it. Come on. Come on. Don't be so. Oh! Don't be so. Oh! There we go. Perfect. That's a good meal, huh? Can you tuck? You gonna take that in there? Or are you just gonna aggressively chew it right here at the entrance? Get that close. What is going on, beautiful people? Welcome back to my wildlife. I'm here in the snake house feeding all my snakes. It's Monday. There's lots to feed. Today, we're starting off with this side of the room. We just finished with that side in the first part of this episode, and now we're feeding King Tut. All right, guys, we're gonna be feeding lots of snakes today, so we're gonna move on. Next, we're gonna be feeding the Gaboon Vipers. We got, oh, they're already into the food. We got the two Gaboon Vipers and a Rhino Viper in here. Let's see, we're gonna feed one at a time. Let's get this girl to take down her food. Ready? Oh, perfect. Nice bite right down on that head. We're gonna close this side. I'm gonna feed this lady right over here. I'm gonna give her a wrap. You ready? Come on. Boom! Oh my goodness, the guts are coming out! Blur it! Blur it with the Patreon blur! Okay, good, good. Alright, let me let me get another wrap for that rhino. This rhino right here. Perfect! No problems at all. All three of them bind down on their food like it's nothing. Now let me just get that glass closed up. Dude, what, you're hungry still? I just fed you. What, you want more food or you just want to bite me? You're such a cranky snake. Stop, don't, no, be, stop it, behave. Sorry, King Tut is a very defensive snake. King Tut is an Egyptian cobra, the second longest cobra species in Africa. They can get fairly big. His parents were roughly around nine, 10 feet long. Pretty crazy snakes. Now, next we're gonna be feeding this beautiful Eastern Diamondback rattlesnake. My second favorite rattler on the planet. They can get upwards to six feet long and the record's just over eight feet long. Let's see, he's definitely gonna be hungry. Let's open this up. I'm gonna feed him a nice sized rat. He is a very good eater, so he's gonna strike out no problem. You ready? Come on. Oh, perfect. All right, we're gonna put that rat right next to him so he can eat that up, get that tail right in there. And close this. Let's make sure it's nice and secure. Now, as we go through, we're trying to feed as many snakes as possible within a timely manner because we have so many snakes to feed. We're going to keep moving on, but we'll throw shots of them eating in between. So let's keep going. We got the little Jordan's pit viper right here. You can see that cute little pit viper just hanging out. We're going to give him a little fuzzy. He's got to unlock this. Let's see. This guy is called a Jordan's pit viper, Protobothrops jordani. And they can come, oh, they can come from high altitudes in Nepal, up in the mountains. There we go. Good boy. Beautiful heads on them. Let's get him actually inside his enclosure. There we go. Right in there, buddy. Come on. There you go. Perfect. All right. He's going to enjoy that meal. Would you just take a breather? We're going to feed Kobe Dinkelman next. I got some mouse fuzzies for him. And we got some little rat pups. So that's going to be real tasty. We're rat pinks, not pups. Got to make sure you use the right terminology. All right, guys. We're going to offer him the fuzzy. I'm just gonna go into the side of this glass. I'm not gonna open it all the way so we're not at any risk. Don't be so defensive, it's food. Dude, hey, <laughs> where are you going? <laughs> Come on. It's yummy. Look, yummy, yummy. You're not gonna, oh, there we go. Come on. Come on. Do you want to be my friend? Let me kiss you. Nice, awesome. And that's not gonna be the only meal the snake eats. I'm gonna have to feed him probably two or three more little fuzzies so he gets a good meal on him. So let me just put this down, close up that glass, and you guys can watch him chow down on that meal like it's nothing. All right, it looks 
like he's finishing up that little fuzzy. I'm gonna give him a little rat pinky now. Look at the way he just looks at it. It's such a cool snake. Black mama, only found in Africa. And this species can get upwards to 14 feet long, making it the second longest venomous snake on the planet. Come on. You want it? Nice little rat pinky. Good protein. Come on. Bam. Perfect. You can see that black interior of the mouth giving their name the black mamba. Not because of their scalation color, but because of the black interior of their mouth. He's chowing down like it's nothing. What a little beast. All right, guys, I'm going to give him one more mouse fuzzy just to make sure he's got a good meal. You want another? Huh? That's all for you, dude. He's like, I think I will. I think I'll take it. Go ahead. Go ahead. He's like, mmm, delicious. All right, let me close this glass up. So we're good to go. Lock up the enclosure so we can move on. We still got this whole entire wall of snakes to feed, so lots to go. Let me just make sure this is nice and secure. And little Kobe Dinkman enjoys his food. All right, guys, we're gonna go to the Indian cobra now. This is the big male that's living in this vision cage. Come on, come on. You hungry? Oh, <laughs> perfect. No problem eating. That snake's doing real good. The prettiest of all the Indian cobras I recently got. All right, let me lock up that enclosure. Now that he's got a mouthful of food, he's probably just going to sit there and chew on it for a second. Uh, we got our Russell Swipers down here. These snakes are going to be eating live mice right now. So we're not going to be showing that on the channel because we don't want to put it on YouTube. It's not for everyone. And also YouTube doesn't care for content like that. So we're going to leave content like that for the Patreon exclusive content. So if you want to see these Russell's Vipers eating along with the Waggler's Pit Viper, we're going to be putting that on the Patreon. So check us out on the Patreon, Chandler's Wild Club, and you guys will be able to see that there. We're going to keep on moving. We've got our Chinese Shark Nose Viper right here. There we go. He's doing pretty good. We've got him in that stuck shed taken care of. He's only got a couple little flakes left and then he'll be good to go. He already knows that we've got food. Now, this snake is no joke. Uh, they're also nicknamed the 100 Pacer because if you get bit, you have about 100 steps left before you die because their venom is so toxic. It's no joke. The strike range on the snake as well is very, very intense. They are able to throw their whole body forward, so you do not want to make a mistake around a Chinese shark nose viper. Even though it's called a Chinese shark nose viper, they're not just found in China, they're also found in Vietnam and a couple other places in Asia. So I'm just going to open up a little bit, not too much. i got to make it easy to close back up. I'm going to offer him that food. Oh, he's hungry. Look at him. Ready? Look at him. Ooh, what a cool snake. Look at that nose. Come on. Ooh. Ooh, what a strike. You going to hold on? No, you don't want to hold on? I'm going to put it back in your enclosure, okay? Can you go back in for me? Very touchy snake. All right, I'll put the rack right in the back. And we're going to close that up because we want to be super safe around this snake. You would not want to get the fangs of this snake inside you because you want to be able to live to talk about it. So I'm going to leave this snake right here. We're going to secure this enclosure. You guys will be able to see the snake and zoom that whole rack, no problem. All right guys, next on the list of feeding, we're gonna be taking care of our little pygmy rattlesnake. This snake has been with the collection for such a long time. It used to be a tiny little worm, smaller than a quarter. And now this snake is roughly around 10 inches long and just came out of a shed. So we're gonna give a nice fuzzy right here. Ooh, perfect strike. We're gonna put that fuzzy right there. I'm gonna grab that shed skin and gently pull it out. Oh, ripping just a little bit. Oh. Well, we got it, no worries. And that's a good shed. It was a whole shed, but it rips apart just a little bit coming off of that hide. But that's good. The snake shedding, growing, doing really good. Florida native, the pygmy rattlesnake, which is the small species of rattlesnake here in the state of Florida. Even though, technically, if you look right here, it's not a true Crotalidae member. It's not Crotalis like the rest of the rattlesnake family. It's Cistrus Milalis. Comment below, did I say that right? Anyways. Pygmy rattlesnake looking good. What's really cool about this is we have our pygmy rattlesnake here in Florida, and we also have the eastern diamondback rattlesnake. So you got the world's biggest rattlesnake, and you got the world's smallest type of rattlesnake, sort of. Like I said, 
It's a little bit of a loophole or anomaly because it's not a true rattlesnake, but it does have a rattle. Look at the tip of that tail. This thing does have a little rattle as a warning. They're also nicknamed the ground rattler because the only way to actually hear them rattle is to get very close to the ground. Obviously, you don't want to get that close. So let's uh, close up the top of this enclosure while the snake begins to eat that food. And you can enjoy the little piggy taking a munch. Okay, here I go. <laughs> Such a cutie. What? Hey, what are you doing, rattlesnake? That's not how you eat. Come on, man. This is an educational show. You're confusing people. You don't really do that in the wild. Come on. This guy's using the tail as a handle on a purse. All right, guys, we're going to let this pygmy rattlesnake eat in peace right up here. And we're going to move on. I took out the white speckle rattlesnakes out of this Gila monster enclosure. So we'll be oh, before we move on, look, we got the Chinese sharp nosed viper eating right now. Looking good, looking good. Nice size rack, good protein boost for that snake. And what I'm saying is we're going to move on to the white speckled rattlesnake, so in a couple seconds we'll go into that. Instead, just enjoy this Chinese shark nose by breathing. Alright guys, we're going to be feeding the little white speckled rattlesnakes. If you come right here, you can see this one. Probably just hiding right there in that hide. You ready? Come on. A little rat pink changing it up. You see that little tongue coming out? She's like, mm, I don't know, is that something I want? Come on. Come on. Come on. I see you. You want it? <laughs> Look at that cute little stick. Oh! You're just going to eat it like that? Oh! She even want to strike it. She started chewing on its head. That works for me. All right, so let's move on to the next snake right over here. The other white speckled rattlesnake. Let's see if this one wants... Oh! Oh! That was way more dramatic. Okay, we'll leave that little rat pink right there. Well, look at this one right over here. They're gorgeous speckled rattlesnakes. And what's so interesting about the speckled rattlesnake is depending on the mountain range they come in, they come in many different colors. So these are white specks, there are pink specks, there are blue specks, there are all different types of speckled rattlesnakes. I got a buddy who's actually got like a pinkish orange pair of speckled rattlesnakes and one day we're gonna go check those out. All right, that Chinese sharp nose viper's done eating. We're gonna put them right back up here. There we go. All right, beautiful people, we're going to be feeding Senor Pepe, my Mexican West Coast rattlesnake. He's hanging out right in the back right now. I'm going to give him this nice size rat. Let's see how he's feeling today. You hungry? Ooh, perfect. Right on that back. We're going to leave that rat right there. I'm going to close this up. Next, we're going to be feeding ooh, Alice in the Black Mamba. She's a beast of a snake. I would say we're going to feed the Amazon puffing snakes next, but they won't eat on camera, they eat in privacy, so Allison's going to be next, and if you look right here, you can see Allison stretched out, she's ready to go. She's been watching us feed all the snakes with much anticipation of her feeding, so let me get this key ready to go. We're going to be feeding her a nice size little rat. All right, let's see how she acts today. Want some rat? Come on. Ooh. Oh! Nice bite. Right there for you. I'm gonna leave it right there and she should start eating at any moment now. Let me just get this class closed up. And you guys can watch her chow down. She's finishing up that big rat. We're actually going to be putting in another rat because she's a good sized mamba. So I'm going to throw that rat right about there on top of the box. And when she finishes up, she'll be able to eat that one too. So she'll have a nice full belly. We're going to lock up this enclosure and move on. We're going to throw a rat to the Ethiopian. Feed three of the snakes out of the four in these vision cages. We're going to leave Childish Gambino, my gaboon crocs with a rhino. We're going to leave him alone because he's a big fat bodied bit of snake. So basically, we don't want to feed them too much. This species, uh, this family can't eat too much food. You can make them obese and short in their life. So we like to feed this guy probably about like once a month or twice a month. So he's good. He ate not too long ago. 
Allison just finished slurping down that bit of the rat, so she's got that tail left. She's gonna finish up that other rat. Let's just get this nice and secure. Is that good? You happy? <laughs> she looks so derpy with that little tail hanging out. He's such a cute snake. All right, now let's give this Ethiopian a rat. This snake, as you know, is very defensive. Like all African snakes, they can be extremely defensive to the point where it almost seems like they're aggressive, but they're not. They're defensive. All right, let's see. We've got a nice sized rat right there. I really doubt this snake will eat for us. It's most likely just gonna act a little crazy right here. Oh, hello. Oh, what was that? Oh, what? You gonna eat it for the first time? Actually eat off the tongs? You want it? See, this seems more defensive. He's not gonna eat that, or she's not gonna eat that. We'll just close that up for now. Well, that was pretty interesting. She's never really reacted like that. Let's get this locked up. Nice and secure. Okay, guys. Next, we're gonna be moving on to the albino monocle cobra. This little lady never refuses food. Hello. You hungry? I haven't seen you come out in a while. Are you in there? Hello. Sleepy? Oh! Want some food? Oh, you're going to shed. Okay, we'll leave you alone. Oh, you still want, oh, still wants food. You can see the eyes are very, very blue. Oh, very, very opaque right now. Not really good with eyesight at this moment. Just a bit defensive. You want that rat? Give it a little flick. Taste it, it's food. I think she does want, oh yeah, she still wants it. All right, she picked up that scent, so she realized that's some good food. So we'll let her have it. It's not crazy, I don't know why I know those milky, milky eyes almost makes it look like a snake ghost. Insecure. Okay, next is the plain black snake. And of course, this is a very interesting snake species. The plain black snake only found on mainland Papua New Guinea and one island above Australia. We're gonna get a nice small little rat. We're going to offer it to this snake. Let's see if this snake is willing to eat in front of us. It looks like he's actually not even inside his hide. He must be hiding in the substrate. Let's see. Oh, something right in here. Oh, oh there he is. Or there she is. Ooh, look at foil. Foil. Oh, 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 there we go. You want some food? Crazy snake? You smell that? Picking up the scent right now. You can see that tongue going off. You want it? Come on. Ooh, come on. Come on. Look at that. See how it flattens out the neck? Very common. Oh, very common of uh, the Sidnecus family members, like red bellied blacks. But of course, this be plain black snake. All right, it seems like this snake is just being a bit flighty. We don't want to stress her out, so we'll just leave that rat right there. And you, up top. Being so cranky, dealing with a very deadly plain black snake, and I don't need you throwing a fuss. Look at that, putting up like crazy. Eat your food, relax. All right, guys. Next, we're going to be dealing with the forest cobra. Most likely, she's hiding inside that hide right there. Look at her nice sized rat. Let's see. If she's going to come out. Oh! Did you see that? Oh my goodness! That's a fast snake. Too bad she doesn't come out enough for you to see her real good. But no worries. Eventually, we're going to have to clean her cage and take her out. So you guys can see her then. Let me lock that up. There we go. The plain black snake is going off and hiding. This one's just hanging out, holding its ground, even though it's basically flying right now. And then Allison is just making her way to that second rat. That's a really good meal. All right, beautiful people. We're going to be feeding the lace monitors last, because that's what we have left to feed. Come on. This is a little lacy. She's coming out. Oh, look at that. She's such a little athletic lizard. Jack is a little bit more athletic. Than, oh, Jack! Give me a chance to give you the whole mouse. Okay, there we go. These guys are growing like weeds, as you can see. Let's get you moving. Come on, come on. Good girl. Let's get you really moving, Jack. Ready, Jack? Ready? Oh, I didn't even get a chance to do anything. <laughs> these guys are doing real good. We're just gonna give them the last of these little rat pinks and pups. They're like the garbage disposals of the snake house. So if anything's left over, they get a nice meal. So let's see. You gonna finish that up? Huh? That's pretty good, right? Jack, you ready? You ready, Jack? Come on, Jack. Oh, 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 she's gonna steal it. Oh, 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 you take this one. I'm gonna take Jack over here. Come on, oh, jeez, Jack. That's a good bite. Come here, come here, you big lizard. 
You just want that food? Come on, chunk it down. You need it? Huh? You gonna give me some? You gonna share it with me? No, I guess not. All right, beautiful people. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Us Being Snakes. It was a two-part episode, so definitely check out all the different bites and strikes. Not everyone was caught eating on camera. Where are you going? So we didn't get to see everyone chew down, but remember, we have around 70 snakes, so that's a lot of snakes to feed. It was definitely interesting trying to film every single one. Maybe next time we'll be able to film every single snake feeding, but for now, we had a good episode. Ooh, lots of happy animals. Everyone's got fat bellies, and I need to go eat, so I'm gonna go get a fat belly myself. I'll see you on the next one. Stay beautiful, stay safe. Don't forget to check us out on Teespring for your own merchandise. Also, check us out on Patreon for exclusive content, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Stay beautiful, stay safe, and most of all, stay gangster.